Suzy can keep an eye on the YouTube channel just in case people ask oh. questions there as well. Uh, but I think uh, 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 welcome to the December 2020 uh, AMA. Uh, so we already collected quite a few good questions on YouTube, uh, sorry, on Telegram, on our forum post. So today uh, I'll hand over to today's, uh, in about one minute, when she finished helping uh, Yenbo to set up the technology uh, sa side, uh, we'll start the web webinar and uh, we'll uh, have Susie as a VJ for today. Yes. Hi, everybody. <laughs> nice to meet you all. I think it's the first time uh, e-meeting you guys all. I'm new to uh, the NCAN team, and today I'll be your host. Uh, so uh, let me give you a brief go of today's time schedule. So we'll start with a 15 to 20 minutes of uh, update of um, our progression uh, recently. And then we'll talk a little bit about our new product and connect um, its commercial progression and its function and the technology behind it. And after that, we'll have a 40 to 45 minutes of ask me anything with the core team. And just let me remind you that we're taking questions on our forum and feel free to leave it on the Q&A bottom on the, um, yeah, on the bottom of this Zoom webinar, or we're taking questions from the YouTube live channel. So feel free to drop any questions, but we'll start with the questions that we pre-collected on the forum. So um, yes, and I think we'll just wait a little bit for Yan Bo, but maybe uh, we'll have the other two team members say hi to you guys. And I'll have a little cheat chat time, I don't know, between you guys. Uh, so do you want to get started, Bruce? OK, yeah. So let me uh, start with the, because uh, um, I think the first 15 to 20 minutes, we'll try to go through uh, not only the latest and connect and the NAS kind of the, uh, the wings, but also give a, a quick overview of 2020 and uh, what we have achieved. So uh, as I mentioned earlier, when I was trying to compile everything into one slide, and I think, oh, wow. We did quite a bit of uh, things in 2020. So let me start the presentation mode. And uh, so we we'll go through a short presentation um, for this year. Let me start to share my screen. Mm -hmm. And I think Yambo will be here in a minute. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, let me go to. Okay. Oh, yes. So can everybody see the presentation? Yes. Good. Yes. Okay. Let me put it in the presentation mode. So yes, AMA... we start here. Oh, okay. Yes. Thank you. Hi. <laughs> so Hi. then we Hi. have Hi. the full house. Yeah. So uh, this is a little bit more nerdy picture, but let me just go through it very quickly. The reason is actually give you some context. What is NKN is and uh, how the different products are built on top of each other. So once I once you look at this whole picture, right, it's very complicated. But look at the four layers. So at the very bottom, you have the NK network. So this is like off-chain network that provides very fast peer-to-peer -peer connect, direct connectivity. So that is the foundation for all the communication inside the network. And on top of that, you see the NKN blockchain. The blockchain is very important, not only for the uh, economic incentive, but also, for example, uh, to make sure that we can verify all the transactions, we can pay the miners and uh, or the, uh, the users of different services can pay directly to individual miners. So those are all automated. So, and without inter uh, intervention from uh, a centralized entity or, or the company, NK and the company. Because there's lots of people asking, what's the difference between NK and the project and NK and the company? So very high level, if you think NKN.org, it's like Linux. So it's open source, it's community driven, and it's a, a nonprofit, right? So that is the foundation. We developed a mainnet node software and publish as much, even the end mobile software, right? So we publish as much software as open source as possible. So that's kind of the community and the foundation. So if you look at the two bottom layer, they are all very, uh, all open source. So the networking side, we have NNet, and then on the blockchain side as NKN. Of course, there's lots of other SDKs, et cetera, but they are forming the foundation and the open source and community driven part of NKN.org. And then you move a little bit up to the upper layer. So the blue one, so the data right uh, as a platform, I think the technology uh, part is still open source and it's also mostly in the foundation. And, but if we move to the orange layer, then you have different products. Those are the products that have com commercial implications. And we sign contracts with different companies, like for example, 
with Synology for the NAS and NCONNECT, and then uh, for IG, with IG in the past uh, with NCDN. So those are the kind of commercial products that actually utilize the NKN network and utilize the uh, blockchain tokenomics economics, but we put some layers like adaptation. Uh, there's some, maybe some, uh, the uh, revenue model or charging model, but at the end of the day, it will be reflected at the, at the NKN foundation level. So that's kind of very high level, how everything tied together. So the data ride is really the overriding platform that provides all the different services. So the developer do not have to learn the individual uh, pieces of the NKN uh, network. And then different application, like for example, this one, we only listed the, the products. NKN as company has actually uh, developed. Of course, we have lots of community developed products like a search by the Route 110 and Christy, Andrew, and, uh, uh, and also Mitch. And those are the kind of community driven product. They also can work together on this very solid foundation. So I hope this kind of explain the overall kind of architecture and how different pieces of NKN fit together. So uh, the, again, I have mentioned earlier, so data right is really uh, one platform that encloses everything that underneath the NKN network and NKN blockchain. So make sure that all the companies, the users and the, the applications just only need to talk to one API, just talk to one layer and abstract the layer. So you can do the charging, you can do the, uh, the data transmission, you can do the accounting and everything on this uh, subscription and, and et cetera on this layer. So this one might not be directly applicable to end user because a, a typical consumer will not use data right as is. Uh, typically it will be used for the developers and enterprises. And so this is more a to b B2B platform. And on top of that, I mentioned there's a few products. So the two main products we're pushing on the enterprise side, we have NConnect and NCD and on the consumer side, we have NMobile. So what is NConnect? So NConnect is specifically designed to enable a very secure remote access to anything in your home or in your office or in a remote location. So uh, there's a few different kind of, uh, you might be able to ask. Uh, so this is a Web3.0 version of the uh, uh, secure remote access. So what's the difference from the 2.0, uh, Web 2.0? What's the difference from, uh, let's say, Google or Ali uh, uh, Cloud or Baidu-based solution? So there are a few uh, advantages and uh, you can look at the forum in detail, but I'll give you some highlights. First of all, it's actually really secure and uh, universally accessible. The reason is uh, in the past, quite often you requires you to uh, open your ports or uh, expose your home computer uh, to the external world, even though you can use uh, secure remote access, et cetera. But still, once you open this access, then anybody who with the credential might be able to access this. And what we did was we do not really open those ports or uh, expose IP address. So as long as any device at home have outbound internet connection, just like if you can browse the internet, then remotely we use NKN address and use NKN tunneling as well as NKN relay network to enable the secure connection. And only you can use the, uh, the, 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 uh, the public private key pair that you know. So we can limit the device to individual device and in individual person, because uh, even other people, because uh, nobody will know that uh, uh, your private key, right? So it's the same as secure as your hardware wallet. So that's kind of the end connect on the end data ride. So one of the first kind of uh, major commercial wing is in October. We announced that uh, we signed a commercial contract with Synology. Uh, so right now, uh, just a, a week ago, uh, we are very happy to see that it's already published on the uh, app market. Uh, and it's actually a, um, starting in the China market and then gradually uh, go, go global. Uh, the reason is also the twofold. First of all, um, we want to test out the market and uh, get the first user feedback, and then we can do some improvements and uh, before uh, rolling out to globally. Secondly, uh, right now it's uh, uh, designed, uh, it's actually optimized for the latest uh, uh, Synology operating system called DSM 7.0. So the, the support for legacy uh, operating system DSM 6.2 is coming up uh, later this year, uh, early uh, next year. And then I think you can we can reach much bigger install base and also can give us some time to uh, hammer out the last bit of usability or uh, any bugs that might be there, right? So that's Synology. 
So again, uh, the business model is very interesting. It's a monthly annual subscription. So we get uh, RMB uh, from the user and then we convert into NKN and put into each end user's wallet. So each end user, whenever they use NConnect service, they actually connect to one of the uh, NKN servers, that, uh, especially the NKN commercial server that's also run the, uh, the tunneling service. So then those micropayments are directly paid from the user's wallet to the miners' wallet. So I think some of the, uh, the miners might already see some very small uh, nano payments in, in their wallet, Th because those are all automated. So there's no NKN company in between. Once the, uh, the user's wallet is char like uh, filled with NKN tokens, they will be paid directly whenever you use NConnect. So that's directly from the user to the miner. So this is a major kind of uh, uh, economic incentive for the miners to run nodes in places not so common today. So I'll touch upon one of the question uh, I saw on the forum. So now the, the, the nodes are very focused on the US market because today we only have mining rewards. So uh, the lower the latency that kind of enables uh, higher pot potential to earn mining reward. But with NConnect turned on and slowly rolling globally, then wherever the users are will connect to the, the nodes uh, by the late, lowest latency. Then if most of the users, let's say in Germany or if it's uh, in, uh, in Singapore, then the user typically will connect to the nodes in Singapore or Germany respectively. And then those nodes will start to get more uh, reward in NConnect uh, nano payment. And that might be eventually one day higher than the uh, NK mining reward. So that will actually enable the ecosystem, the mining community to adjust to this new economic model. And then we will not, I, 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 my, I'm quite positive that the, the, we won't see that kind of concentration of nodes in the US anymore, because I think lots of the NAS uh, device owners are in Europe and also in uh, East Asia, Southeast Asia and China, not only in the US. And then uh, the next thing is uh, actually a surprise because you guys are, uh, coming to the AMA, so always give you a happy surprise or the holiday gift. So uh, we're also happy to announce that we also are listed on Asuster as well. So we have a commercial contract, Asuster. And Asuster, uh, you might not know the name, but if you, we talk about computer giant, uh, Asus, you probably know, because Asus make computers, make monitors, make uh, uh, iPads, and uh, I think it used to make uh, mobile phones as well. So it's the, one of the biggest computer giant uh, based in Taiwan. So. Asuster is their uh, NAS division, uh, fully owned and 100% uh, uh, kind of invested a company specialized in NAS. So we are on their market as well. And this one will be global. So we start with the beta market and eventually goes into uh, for some testing and eventually goes into the, 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 uh, the, uh, the production market. And this again will be a monthly uh, annual subscription. And this one will uh, most likely charge in US dollars and also local currencies like a Euro and et cetera. So we have payment system ready both by the credit card and uh, in the future uh, by Apple Pay and also uh, the, uh, uh, by PayPal. So that's in the future. So that's kind of a happy surprise for the users coming to uh, our community, coming to this AMA. So this we have not announced publicly yet, but this is for you to know first. So now I, I think enough for me to talk and I talk quite fast and you can always ask questions after the presentation. So I, I hand over to Iren to say a few words about what has happened on the, on the technology and product side. Uh, yes, yeah, so hello everyone. I'm Iren, um, C uh, CTO of NKN. So um, I'm, today I'm going to give us some like brief updates since our last AMA a few months, uh, like two months ago. Uh, so, uh, so the, this break, breaks down to a few aspects. So first of all, for the mainland part. So as you can see from our like uh, GitHub release, we have uh, we have quite uh, we have quite a few releases that uh, has some upgrade behind the scenes. So the, fir the first aspect is a consensus upgrade. So if you have a uh, wrong like a uh, low end node, you will probably notice that the current version is much much more. Uh, efficient and uh, stable than before. Uh, and the second update is the database optimization. Again, uh, it will be quite noticeable for low-end devices. And uh, the current version is still is quite optimized and stable, much better than before. And also the nodes now are be able to obtain the like TLS 
uh, thirds, as we have talked to that encrypted team, and they are very, they are very um, like uh, like uh, they are very happy to help us to increase the limit. And now the node can provide TLS service to all the clients across the world, which makes the NCAN client usable in uh, HTTPS environment in the browser. Uh, that's a like huge, uh, that's, that's a huge market and uh, has quite a lot of people requesting that already. And the second of all, for the client and the wallet SDK side, so we are, as some of you have already known that we are developing the C++ SDK, which seems to be a very uh, critical crit uh, like part in the ecosystem uh, because the C++ is much more uh, memory and CPU uh, like efficient than the Go SDK we are mainly using now. And it will be very uh, usable in some of the embedded devices, like uh, for example, the, uh, a smart camera or like uh, 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 so something like smaller than a Raspberry Pi, like a smart hardware or IoT devices. And that's one of the bottleneck that why the previous thinking SDK cannot run in the smart camera. And now with the new C++ SDK in develop, it, it should be able to run pretty smoothly and efficiently. And also we will have an iOS SDK based on the C++ SDK because uh, as some of you have already tested, the, the LS has pretty hard memory limit on the background task and the previous Go SDK cannot fit into that uh, limit. And uh, so some of the features were, were not available on LS, uh, but now with a new C++ SDK, we should be able to run it on LS as well. So all the features should be available on both iOS and Android after we have we have it finished. And also uh, for, we have uh, another important update in the, for a data right paid bandwidth. So as previously, most of our uh, bandwidths are relay bandwidth, which is um, free and uh, uh, there is no, like, it's not, well, there is economic incentive for miners to earn the mining reward, but it is not a like full, um, token economics because the user does not need to pay any token. But now uh, with, uh, with more data write paid bandwidth like service like NConnect or like Tuna or something like that, the users will be paid the miners or the service provider based on the bandwidth usage. So this has a, a few quite important uh, implications. So first of all, so it, it makes um, well, an NCAN token like a more legit uh, utility token because it actually makes an NCAN token has a utility value. You can use it to purchase bandwidth, to use bandwidth. So it's, um, it's, it's quite, well, you, it's not obvious, but it's quite important. And, and second of all, it's as Bruce has mentioned, it provides to a miners uh, economic incentive to deploy nodes uh, outside the US. As currently, there are most of the nodes are in the US and people have been asking, oh, when are we going to have more nodes in Europe, in Asia or something like that? So uh, this part has a quite a high incentive that allows miners to shift some of the nodes towards the, um, the, the current areas with less nodes because that will um, gives them more like uh, rewards through the nano pay, which should be quite substantial when we get more users. Um, so, uh, and uh, yeah, I think that's most of the updates from the tech part. And uh, I will hand, hand over to Bruce to continue the uh, slides. Uh, actually, the next one is, uh... Uh, for Yambo, so um, there, there are sometimes uh, uh, Yambo has been working very hard, 120 percent on the project, but he's uh, not uh, as often uh, participating in the Telegram chat or something like that. So um, we, I want to have uh, Yambo here to say a few words to the community and uh, make sure that they know that uh, he's not only 120 percent, but he's also <laughs> have a, a very kind of bright future for the project. So Yambo, please. Yeah, I'm glad to see everyone here. I think it's uh, already be a long time having to have to hold the, the MA farewell. So time fly, I think NCAN project already be three years. 
in the cryptocurrency world, I think three years or three years means we already be an old project. I should be thanks to you, everyone uh, for your support and also the team's effort in the past two or three years. We have been experiencing the cold winter, both in the blockchain world and also in the real world in the past two years. But we are still alive and keep delivering reliable service and uh, useful pro products in the, in, in, the, uh, in the past two years and, as, and also, also now. So, but I think like all other projects or company, we made a mistake in this process, but our goal is clear. When there is a problem, we adjust our direction and make a necessary improvement in time to reach our goal step by step, which is the free the bits and the rebuild the internet we all want. We continue to make our new products even better just like the uncollect and also some other very potential pro product will be announcement later. So we hope uncollect servers and the related products can be used by more and more people in future together with the effective economical incentive model. So the uncollect holder also can, be, can get the benefit from it. Um, so it will be a holiday soon which is the new year and the Christmas. I wish you all have a happy holiday in advance. And uh, that's all what I want to say to, to you guys. And I, I think you guys have a lot of questions want to ask us. And then it starts that start the MA, uh, MA phase here. Okay, let me stop the presentation and uh, then Susie can start the ask questions to, uh, to the, our panelists and also, um, yeah. Yeah. So uh, just a little thing before we get started to the Ask Me Anything. So we are on, we are available on Zoom webinar and also on YouTube Live. So choose your convenient way. And also, if you happen to miss a part, don't worry, we'll have a recorded version later posted on our YouTube channel so you can review the whole session uh, later on our offshore channel. So uh, that will be me for now. Let's get us started for the questions. So uh, I'll get started with the first question. So we actually pre-collected it and in the forum and so the first question would be, what was all bad about the old internet? from our community member. So I hope the core team could probably give a interesting answer to this one because it's quite interesting. And I think people even who's not in the tech world or crypto world would be quite interested. Um, so I think Elon, do you want yeah, to I can, start with? I can, yeah. yeah, sure, I can start. <laughs> okay. Uh, so I, I, I wouldn't say internet is bad or wrong today. I would say that some aspect of the internet, well, let's say in general, when we design a system like the internet, we always make some assumptions and uh, then we, we build a system that, as, like, that is best uh, within, the, this, within those assumptions. So, but not all, of, all those assumptions are still valid today. So for example, many parts of the internet was designed assuming that participants are honest or like not attackers or bad. Well, not all of the parts, but some of them. So for example, uh, well, when the when you have control the root DNS server or not, not just a, not a root DNS, just like a regular DNS server. And then you can like just send out false uh, or like uh, uh, like faulty um, entries to other DNS servers, and they will trust you and update and broadcast those uh, malicious items for you to other servers, and it will spread over to the world. So that's that, that's some of the uh, way that attack. Well, this we have already seen those attacks in the past, or those accidents. Some of the DNS server went wrong, and uh, it just makes a whole internet across the whole earth to have some like huge trouble. So, well, that's just one example, but a lot of the, and also some of, most of the uh, protocols, not with before, uh, let's say 2020, 20, or before, uh, designed before 2010 or 2000, 
was not have encryption in mind, and they generally do not have any security guarantee in the transport layer. And assuming that no one is in the middle that being able to uh, capture or modify the packet, which is obviously as history have already proven to be wrong. And well, uh, that's just a few examples, but I, I would say that, uh, yeah, those are, uh, the security is a very important aspect. And another thing is that, uh, as we know that IP address, that's the, the most popular way, of, uh, the, the most popular way of addressing the node in the net internet IPv4 is, is kind of, yeah, it, the people assume that 32 bit is enough forever, but it turns out to be it basically used up in like 20 or 30 years. And for as, as of today, there's already no new IPv4 address that can be assigned. So, uh, so that, that basically means that the internet has to adapt to the internal internet and like external internet. And most of the devices are not exposed to external, making it basically impossible to address a, a node within like behind the firewall or behind the router or something like that. IPv6 is kind of a way to resolve this problem, but it will, it will take like tens of years, many decades to be able to be adapted uh, to be adopted widely, uh, that we can basically that's that's quite a long uh, long progress and not available as a mainstream solution today. So we can see that there were a, a, a few many assumptions that have break in the past, and uh, I wouldn't say it's bad or wrong, but that's still the problem we need to solve today in order to have a, a like a more usable more. Uh, uh, stable or like more secure internet that we want to use today, not in not by our like grandsons or something like that, but today as everyone can use now. So I, that, that's one of the goals, that, or I want to say that's the main goal of Inkian and what what we are trying to build or improve today. So Yembo, do you want to add to that? Yeah, yeah, I have some more words I want to say. I think we don't want to say that the, the internet internet is bad or good. I think internet itself is always in motion by itself because, uh, you know, the, the time change and there's some new requirement and uh, there are some new features be, be added, be, be, you know, be, be changed in the internet. Uh, internet always, always change. So from this point of view, I think maybe NK is just a part of internet. It's just, just the next step to in motion or revolution. So, so it's it's just a very natural step by step to evolution instead of that we want to change some bad things. Right. Uh, maybe I add one last thing. It's more about the centralized versus decentralized, right? Also about economic incentive, because uh, a long time ago, uh, one of the first food delivery service, I think it's called Waiter.com, and our office is right next to it. So I saw on the parking lot. There's one uh, like a Porsche 911, a very good car. I, I guess it's probably founders. And then all the other cars are like uh, 20 year old, maybe Lada or some kind of Mazda 3, like a really old car, very crappy, almost a falling down car. Because those are the delivery guys, right? So uh, when you have a centralized system, there's one or two, a few people really get rich by lots of people's effort. I'm not saying that is not right, but I think maybe at least make it more fair, right? So let's say CEO have a Volkswagen Passat and the delivery guys can have the Volkswagen, uh, Volkswagen Golf. So more evenly distributed, or at least everybody can participate in the success of a, a system. So that's my kind of view on the economic side. So like in the NK network, so uh, miners actually are all individual in entrepreneurs and companies. The NK and only, the company only run very small amount. So if the NK Connect becomes successful and lots of NAS users use it, those money all directly go to all the uh, the miners, right? So we, we was, of course, get some conversion fees and this uh, uh, like uh, exchange leveraging and just managing the, the exchange part. But otherwise we, we don't really make like a, a dishonest amount of money out of it, right? So that's kind of from my point of view, what's the difference between centralized and decentralized system? It should be. Mm -hmm. Okay, I think the teams got uh, pretty answers um, to the first question. So we're not uh, defining the old internet as bad, but more we are doing progressions and maybe it's doing progressions in, in itself and we are taking parts in the progressions, right? Uh, okay, so let's move on to the second question. 
the second question will be,、um, can you give us some more intel on Coinbase progression? And I think maybe this one、uh, will have Bruce yeah. on mic. Yeah, I think yeah, we、we'll、get touch with the Coinbase of yeah from time to time, and、mm-hmm. uh, especially because Coinbase based on US and、uh, Bruce have a lots of、uh, you know contact with with them. I think Bruce could be updated about the the latest progress with them. Yeah,、mm-hmm. I think it will be a little short update because we don't we cannot say too much before anything is official. So,、uh, but the,、uh, at least we are keep regular、uh, updates with Coinbase, and、uh, so we are working with different teams within Coinbase because Coinbase like they probably have three main parts, and they have the、uh, the custody as you know already. So we are under consideration by the Coinbase custody, and they have exchange or the Coinbase Pro and Coinbase dot com part. So those are the kind of exchange. And、uh, but I think the good news is they all use the same process in evaluating projects. So I think the good news is at least we go through some of the steps.、Uh, we are not there yet, but I think we are have constant、uh, updates and、uh, we are making steady progress, even though it's slow. And、uh, so, but I think that's how、uh, Coinbase is. Because Coinbase is very selective. Uh, for example,、uh, I think、uh, two days ago they listed three、uh, these DeFi tokens, and those tokens are really the granddaddies of the DeFi tokens, right? They are not like a sushi. They have been there for I don't know two years, three years. Like Bancor, when we started, Bancor was already there. So、uh, I think they really value the the kind of long term trajectory of the project, how solid the project is, are, are they making real good progress, and etc. So we are making good progress. So, but I, I I don't have any immediate news to share yet. But we are making progress toward the、uh, the goal to get listed on Coinbase eventually.、Mm-hmm. Okay,、um, sure. Let's carry on to the next question, which is very interesting.、Um, could you explain in detail about the difference between a mobile and a mobile pro? And anyone? <laughs> yeah, I think I think I could have a brief uh brief word about、uh, the difference between them, and maybe Elon or Bruce have some some more information later.、Mm-hmm. So, so maybe the the name of a mobile and a mobile pro just confuse some some people. It looks like that a a mobile pro is just、um, enhancement version of a mobile, a mobile. but.、Uh, But、uh, from our point of view, they are totally different because a mobile is the one hundred percent open source and、uh, more focus on communication, which means the 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 you know the feature of a mobile is just the chat with a with with a with an wallet. But for a mobile pro, yes, it also have the Basic function is the DChat. It DChat function be integration in the Envelope Pro, but in Envelope Pro, we have a lots of a enterprise feature in there. For example, we integration the unseeding even before in Envelope Pro, and also the uncollect into the Envelope Pro. So from this point of view. The mobile pro should be related to a mobile enterprise, but you know this name is too long to be displayed in the in the safe and screen, so we still keep the name mobile mobile pro, but、uh, but a mobile pro should be a mobile enterprise, which integration lots of a、uh, business or enterprise function in there, and the normal people don't need it. For normal people, just want to try the DeChat or the Watch. They just use the mobile, and because it's one hundred percent open source, they can they can know how it works. But for a mobile pro, they just use it when they need it. For example, when they use the unclick function or the, when they run the unsealing something like that. So that's a that's an explain explanation from my side. So any more from Bruce or Elon? No, I think that's good. I, I don't have anything else. Yeah, I think that's good too. Okay, 
Sure. Um, so the next question, I think Bruce touched it on uh, earlier uh, when he was trying to explain the Synology uh, contract and on and connect. So it would be the next question would be a lot of effort has gone into the recent Synology contract and integration. Do you have other NAS vendors in the works or at any stage of business development? If so, can you give any details about them? So, yeah, I think we already give you the, uh, the, As the good news. Right? <laughs> Asusta is uh, a new one and nobody else has known yet uh, other than the people on the call. Uh, and uh, we don't stop there. And uh, of course, we have at least one large one in the pipeline uh, in, the, in the technical integration phase. So our goal is really to capture the top three out of five NAS vendors in this space. So uh, that's our ambition. And uh, I think we are not far from that goal. Mm -hmm. Sure. Um, okay, let's move on to the next question. Um, have there been any further developments with new NCDN customers? Uh, I can take that as well. So NCDN mm -hmm. is actually, uh, we, we started with IT earlier this year, and uh, I think we gone through a few uh, billing cycles. So I think right now we are not kind of pushing, put a lot of kind of pushes to it, because I think uh, NCDN, there are two, two things that's unique to it, right? First of all, it's a very unique to the China market uh, where the uh, NCDN or the CDN price is very low. And uh, so uh, even with NKN's kind of very low cost base, it will not be very viable uh, in the international market. We, we have tried with different European and US customers. Uh, I think it's too difficult. Uh, and the, so that's the reason the, uh, the, the profitability and all is still kind of, we need to figure out the better way the second way is uh, uh, it does not have as kind of a native connect as the N connect as uh, the N connect service because the N connect service we use like Elon said so the miners will be paid directly like uh, directly between the users and the miners so that's kind of the model we really like uh, but the NCDN we still have to be a company in between and uh, so we convert the payment and uh, so it's not kind of the uh, really utilized NKN blockchain or the NKN as such. We do use the NKN's network uh, and, and the, uh, the edge uh, server nodes. That's our benefits, but we don't integrate with the blockchain part as closely as the NKN. So that's the reason we, for now, we are kind of just to still uh, watch a bit. How can this be more profitable or for the miners and also uh, how can it have better integration with the NKN network? But we are actually now putting most of our focus on NConnect because this is really something uh, very tightly integrated with NKN network, uh, show the unique benefits of NKN and also uh, I think will bring more miners, more revenue uh, globally as well. So those are the reason why uh, we have slight business shift um, to, towards more NConnect focus for now. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I'll carry on to the next question. So the next question would be any future plans of business wise or commercial wise uh, yeah, plans that we have. And also I think you could also touch on, we have other questions like future marketing and commu communicational plans. So maybe if you want to do this together as a um, progressing plans. Yeah, I can uh, lightly touch on the uh... The, the, the business and commercial side. So I think uh, from what we have seen from the NAS vendors, I think it's very clear. We can capture the top of the market uh, for, well, I would say our goal is three out of top five NAS vendors. So I think it's achievable. So because we have a unique uh, competitiveness there, uh, mm -hmm. but that's just one market, right? So NAS itself, it's a good uh, market. So I think in 2020, the total market uh, size is about $20 billion uh, globally. Uh, but of course, end connector is only the remote access part. So that will be a fraction of that. So even if we capture the, that whole market, it's very good revenue for 2021. But I think for the future, um, we need to find additional revenue streams. So that's the reason why what Elon was mentioning, we uh, put a lot of effort to develop the C++ uh, SDK uh, because that one solved two problems. First of all, it solved the iOS problem. So our iOS app, the end mobile pro uh, have some limitation because the uh, Apple uh, have a limitation on the memory size uh, and whatever. So those are details, but with C++, we can enable a very efficient and uh, 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 like uh, uh, Apple uh, iOS implementation. The second one is really pushing into smaller devices. If you look at home devices, so NAS is probably the high end because uh, NAS, 
like especially Synology and Assistant Nest, the, the middle levels, they have full core, uh, sometimes ARM, sometimes Intel processor, they have plenty of RAM, plenty of memory and disk. So they can run the end connector plenty well today, no problem. But if you go down to the next level, if you go to smart cameras, you go to uh, smart doorbells, thermometers and other home devices, then you have more limitation in terms of the processing power, in terms of memory and disk. So that's when the C++ SDK together, uh, together with a lighter client will enable us to go into those smaller devices. And for example, we have been talking about in the past, how do we remotely monitor our home uh, security camera? Uh, previously, we have to use a gateway in between, right? So for example, we run an IoT gateway, which is the, uh, used to be the Mozilla WebThings gateway. That in turn connects to your web camera. Then we can do a remote streaming. But you need a, a kind of home gateway. Most people don't have that. But if we can embed that client directly into the webcam, I think we'll open up a very large additional market. So the webcam definitely is one of the segments we want going with the C++ plus the lightweight SDK and also other smart home devices or other connectivity devices that need this secure remote access. And also they will be based on the same business model as NConnect. So user will pay a monthly or annual subscription and then those will be converted into NTN and those will be in turn paid directly to the miners. Mm -hmm. And then about the, the second question, marketing and the business plan. So I think uh, there are two different parts, right? So we have NKN.org, like the token side and also the business side. So uh, for the NAS and NConnect, I think it's a, very much in the beginning is uh, when we are doing the business development is to enterprise, right? So it's a B2B. So we have a sales team and an enterprise sales team to go to those NAS device vendors and the webcam vendors to get the deal. So those are, you, you don't need to add the five hives on the uh, internet for that. But then once this service is live, like on Synology and Asuster, then we start to do to see marketing. So that's Susie and the team in, in, in China has been working on it. How can we find the users? And uh, uh, there are two things, right? One is to go through the, uh, like for example, Synology user forum and uh, and uh, some uh, all those places where the NAS owners have the, the interest. The second is uh, like uh, collaborate with Synology as Suter. When the time's right, they will help us uh, marketing as well because it's also, uh, we have a revenue share with the uh, Synology and uh, those NAS vendors. So, uh, and, uh, and et cetera. So they will get that uh, incentive to push the service as well. Uh, uh, sorry for that Suter. Uh, and then the last one will be uh, how do we do uh, targeted search word uh, like uh, advertising. So if somebody search for Synology NAS remote access, so on um, search engines like Baidu or Google, we can actually uh, pay for this uh, search words because those are very targeted. User have a need and if we can uh, bid on it, maybe we can get a very good conversion. So those are three things that uh, Susie and the team in Beijing and also myself are working on to, to improve that. So that's on the product side. So it's very much like any other startup. Then on the NCAN token side, I think we have been uh, working with some of the, um, the media. Um, so like Coindesk and uh, Crypto uh, Telegraph, oh, sorry, um, crypto, crypto Briefing and Coin Telegraph and et cetera. And we try to uh, get some of the more editorial uh, articles in, uh, especially toward the early beginning of the year. Uh, so similar to what we did with Coindesk about the uh, RTE deal. Uh, so, uh, and also we will work with uh, some of the uh, or uh, KOLs, so we'll do more video interviews and etc. cetera. Um, so I, I think those are the things we will uh, do uh, to enhance the, uh, the recognition of NKN. Uh, I hope these two can help each other, mm -hmm. especially in crypto. Uh, the big news will, will only happens when you have a, uh, a crypto project have some kind of commercial or partnership with a, a non-crypto company, which is well known. Like uh, for example, you have a partnership with cloud, Google Cloud or you have a partnership with Microsoft or you sell to SAP or Oracle, then become big news. So I think these two probably will help each other, uh, especially with our NAS wings and, uh, and then in the future with webcam wings and also uh, uh, those kind of and connector related business wings. So Susie, please feel free to add more uh, if uh, please, yeah, on the marketing and the community side. 
Yes. Um, and I think you've touched on pretty much everything we've been working on. And yes, we are making progressions and we're trying out. And as uh, Ian Bo said earlier, we might uh, have failures, but we are keeping our goals and we are keeping the progression. So I think we'll eventually reach there. And I think by answering to that question, Bruce also uh, touched on uh, another question, which is, do we have any uh program or any plans to boost uh, appre appreciation of the tokens. I think uh, Bruce has already touched on. Is there anything Elon or Yembo wants to add on to this one? If not, I'll just keep on doing the other questions. No? Yeah, I don't have any. Yeah, we, 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 we can keep, keep going, yeah. Okay, so the next one is actually uh, recently the official website has been redesigned. And could you elaborate a bit on your idea of this update? Is this an attempt uh, to focus a little bit more on marketing and the future plans? So I think maybe this one would be, uh, I'll pass the mic to Bruce, maybe. Okay, I can start. Actually, uh, Susie did lots of work in revamping the website. Exactly, yeah. Yeah, so Susie <laughs> should take most of the credit for that. And uh, she has been working very <laughs> closely with our uh, uh, very, very nice uh, developer, <laughs> Chris and, uh, uh, her and his team. And uh, so uh, it's really uh, nice to have this refreshed look and also have the priority right so people can get the information uh, very easily and very understandable way so I, I think because i think when we started the project about three years ago yan bu and i and you we, we have an idea of how the project should be so the website have not been really changed much <laughs> since the uh, the very early days so I, I think i'm very glad that suzy uh, as a more fresh pair of eyes and together with chris and uh, so we uh, did uh, actually it's a total revamp so not a single code was reused from the old website and uh, we, we did everything from scratch. So uh, uh, that's good. Uh, I think in terms of the uh, branding, uh, I do think I, I have something that we have been discussing for a while. So how can we uh, distinguish the identity of the NKN.org, this community project from NKN, the company which have all the commercial products, right? So for now it serves as well to combine the two in one place called ncan.org. But soon I think that we might have to maybe separate these two. We probably, so it's a good idea. So you, the, the community can give us some feedback as well, right? So um, it's better because otherwise people get confused when uh, uh, the community developers or open source uh, enthusiasts come to NKN website and say, oh, why you only talk about the NConnect and uh, NCDN and then mobile. Um, on the other hand, if it's an enterprise customer, like uh, let's say, uh, Oracle and Microsoft coming to this website say, well, I want to buy and connect or other services, but I'm not too sure if I want to touch the blockchain or the, the other mm -hmm. side, right? So I think at a certain point, we probably need to separate these two entities more clearly, either as a two website or two uh, kind of persona of the same website or whatever it is. Uh, I think that's something uh, among the founding team uh, and even with Chris and also some of the key members uh, like Tom, we have been have a little chat on this one. Uh, we haven't figured out the best way to do it yet, but I think that will be one big topic for us in 2021 as well. Mm -hmm. Okay, so yes, I think uh, I'll give pretty much all the credit to Chris and all his amazing team because they were doing such a good job on building the internet. Uh, I mean, the website. Uh, so yes, I'll move on to the next question. Uh, okay, the next is very interesting. It's what's your thoughts on Surge DAPP? Uh, yeah, before this, before I ask this question, I think there are some people just to have some question in the in the chat windows. You uh -huh. see that the the website is pretty, but uh, with with the slow flag, uh, it just makes the website very slowly. <laughs> Okay. So I think, yeah, yeah that's a problem. And the uh, way to do more cash or speed up the website access to make everyone to easily access the website both from the, the PC or from the, the safe phone. Yeah, we, we, get, we got it. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, we'll talk to Chris and uh, Elon. Uh, 
uh, probably we'll have some technical solution to solve that. Either uh, we have uh, better CDN services or we can, uh, for example, uh, yeah, um, tone down some of the dynamic content for particular clients and uh, mobile clients, et cetera. So yeah, we'll work on that one. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's yeah. back to the question that yeah. about the surgery. Possible search. <laughs> so, yes. Then let me start start the my, my point of view. So sure. in fact, uh, I very like surgery. Uh, it's uh, it's almost the top two software that I want to do based on NKN. But I think the 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 Zhu one one O team do a very great job. It's uh, much better than the BitTorrents. And they have lots of advantage to compare with BitTorrents. Uh, but, but it's just that uh, in my, I do lots of testing on this search, but it still have some problem. But I think it's a very potential choose or software that could be used by lots of people in future. Uh, and also we have a uh, good news for Zhu 110 team that we have a we have an incentive from the Anchor Foundation, and the way we announcement the the incentive in the in in future in, in future days. Yeah. Yeah. So the Rule One One Zero team, congratulations on the a great beta launch of the search and. Uh, I also use it all every day. I think it's much better than uh, BitTorrent. So we can definitely take the lead from BitTorrent and with the right marketing push and word of mouth, I think we can overtake them over time. And again, as Yenbo said, uh, we are preparing a Christmas, uh, happy Christmas uh, gift to the Rule 110 team and we'll announce it before the Christmas, definitely. Anything from Elon's side? Uh, yeah, I also want to add something. To the so, uh, a little, a little bit aspect from the uh, tech expert, tech uh, technology aspect to those people who um, don't know much about technology. So, I just want to say that search is um, very not only a very uh, useful and meaningful product, but also technologically it's very uh, challenging and uh, well. Uh, personally, I'm most interested in the technology side, so I'm really interested in like a lot of the design and implementation details about like how search is designed and implemented and how it's it's planned and something like that. Yeah, it's uh, it, it's a quite challenging task and it's a very ambitious task, and I would really appreciate um like uh, a team could like build it in such a like short amount of time and. Uh, really nicely with like a pretty good design and also pretty good UI user, user experience or something um, like that. So I uh, there were a lot of uh, features that I uh, I also want to like request uh, or like I see people are requesting <laughs> for the search. But I, I believe that search will have a pretty uh, uh, like uh, uh, solid like user base, uh, potential user base in the future. If uh, they are being, if they are able to uh, like push forward and improve the improve the product, it's already pretty awesome now. Uh, it it can be even like more awesome, uh, like with a little bit some like tiny features. And uh, I think that uh, yeah, I, I really enjoy uh, using search. And I think that's that's also one of the missing part in the NKN like ecosystem, the file sharing part, which has been. Which have, which are being asked quite a lot, and uh, yeah, there are. So I think it shows a a good sign that like uh, the community community and like uh, the open source community can uh, make up the missing pieces in the ecosystem, and we are um, waiting for like other pieces in the ecosystem to appear as we probably yeah hopefully as we will probably see in the future. Yeah, that's yeah, that's my thought. And really good job, uh, Rule One One Zero team. Mm -hmm. 
Thank you. Uh, and uh, even though I cannot represent anything, but uh, I just want to uh, say everyone who's watching this AMA that surges uh, on an open beta, and I think there will they will come every just as uh, what Elon said, like he would uh, you know want something or like to. Uh, uh, you know, uh, some features like to to know uh, to add some features on. So if you have any expert uh, suggestions, uh, I think you're very much welcome to go on their uh, search page and communicate with the team. Uh, yes, and uh, I'll move to the next question is, um, do you consider to expand both number of community built the APPs and developers? If so, then by what means? So I think uh, uh, we uh, I think Yanbo and Yun already mentioned. So I think uh, uh, we uh, we cannot like uh, just buy developers, <laughs> right? Because I think we have done this in the past. We have a let's say a bounty, and mm -hmm. uh, there will be some developers coming and do a very quick job. Sometimes they maybe <laughs> reuse some of the other design from a different project, and they they collect a bounty and never heard from them again, right? Mm -hmm. So I think that might not be the right type of incentives. So we really appreciate uh, like a, a member, a development members like a rule 110. So they, they, did the, they took it a long-term view, right? So we want to attract the people who are actually excited or interested in technology, see the potential of technology and then build innovative things on top of that. And then once they build that one, they have this internal incentive to keep it going and also we as MK and as a foundation will provide the, uh, the, the support whenever we can, right? But mm -hmm. it's not so much about hanging our carrots in front of people to, to come, because sometimes it doesn't give the right incentive and uh, attract the wrong type of uh, people. Mm -hmm. Yes, and we are more, you know, focused on the quality instead of the quality. Mm -hmm. right. So, mm -hmm. yes. Okay, so uh, I'll move on to the next question. Um, any future partnerships or mutually created products with other blockchain projects? Any plans? Um, I think uh, 2020 has been a little bit tough year for lots of projects. So uh, we haven't had a lot of kind of in-person connection um, due to the lockdowns in the US uh, or mm -hmm. traveling ban. So. Uh, we are still in contact with some of the projects. Uh, if we find something that can really help us, and uh, uh, like in the past, for example, mm -hmm. we have used we had some interaction with uh, IOTEX on the IoT side. So mm -hmm. that's one possibility because uh, with the C plus uh, plus uh, SDK, uh, we should we should be able to support their future generation of the webcam. Uh, that's mm -hmm. kind of uh, it's not set in stone, but I think that's one potential things to do, and. Uh, and we're also looking for other opportunities. For example, uh, our ERC20 token is still traded on Uniswap. So right now the volume is kind of low. So maybe we can find some way to uh, improve the liquidity and, uh, and activities there. Because I, I do think that uh, the DeFi um, and the decentralized exchange do have uh, certain benefits. And, uh, and I think it, it kind of give you the uh, unlimited access to different assets and uh, and the opportunities uh, without all those geographical or uh, limitations. So I think those are the things we will be working on, uh, but otherwise uh, we will announce it when the, uh, the partnership uh, materialized. Mm -hmm. Sure. Um, anything Yen Bo or Elon wants to add on? Your thoughts? No? <laughs> yeah, I fully, fully okay. agree with the first, what first said, yeah. <laughs> okay. okay. Um, <laughs> yeah. Okay, so thinking about the time, I think uh, we'll probably close the AMA with the last question. And the last question is actually a little chit chat question, like how's the team going? I think maybe we could uh, do a light per, um, updates on the the team and everybody. So before that, I, I just checked and I saw some like uh, question on YouTube and I want to answer. Oh, sure. The technic pretty, pretty technical one. So uh -huh. um, the crypto is asking um, the Ethereum develop, uh, develop, uh, uh, dev ecosystem is flourishing. Uh, uh -huh. Have you considered to tap into that community and attract developers at high values? 
um, and the, uh, that, that highly value the principle of decentralization. Uh, yes, of course, if, um, if, we, if, if possible. So, but there are uh, just something to uh, like, let you know if you're not like familiar with Inkian. So the Ethereum and most of the blockchain, they are focused on the on-chain um, part, which is like the smart contract or like basically anything related to transaction. Um, but in Kian, as type of, we are mostly focusing on like the off-chain part. So uh, the ecosystem, the application that we build and the community like the InConnect or like a mobile D-chat or something like that, or the app that community build, uh, for example, like the search by the rule one zero, they're all off-chain application, which means that, that uh, you, you don't have like transactions uh, as a core part. Most of, most of them are like for data transmission or something like that. So it's more, uh, it, it, I would say compared to like Ethereum, uh, like Ethereum uh, D apps, it's more close, uh, more similar to traditional applications like the instant messenger you are using uh, or like the tunneling uh, application you are using. So, so, so that, that's, uh, that's kind of our unique values. So yeah, if uh, if we have the chance that to, uh, we if we have the chance to attract some of the uh, Ethereum um, community developers that values of decentralization, that would be a, a very good thing, and we are willing to do it if we have got the chance. Also, we are kind of more focusing on the like off chain part, which we want to attract more regular uh, developers that they can take our SDK and use in like uh, quite a few minutes. And uh, that's our like long-term goal. And we believe that's a, also is a large, much larger market than like the decentralized community itself. Yeah, do you have anything to add for this question? If nope. not, I think today we can go, to, we can, can go to your uh, final Last question. question. How, how's, how's the team going overall? <laughs> Maybe you know, you can start. Yeah. Um, since I just talked, so bas uh, basically, from yeah, I so uh, if you don't know, I live in California now, uh, the Silicon Valley, um, very close to Bruce. So now here it's uh, it's I would say the well the situ the the situation is not quite good due to the virus. It's mm -hmm. a little a lot better compared to some of the other areas. Mm -hmm. And for example, I know some people or like our collaborators whose families and friends, many of them got the uh, COVID, but here it's uh, it's already better than most of the uh, US areas, but it's still not quite safe to go out, as, at least for me. So I, I have been staying and working <laughs> at home living at home, playing at home, do everything at home for, let's say for like almost a year. Uh, yeah, so I haven't gone out for like, uh, for vacations or for, for like groceries or something. It, the, the, the reason thing, my lifestyle has changed quite a lot as you can see from my hair. <laughs> <laughs> I have been trying to DIY a lot of things that I wasn't, um, that, that I was not doing before and uh, trying out the services that I've never had before and uh, watching out some of, some of the like giants got like more attractions and providing better service like the Zoom or for the uh, remote meeting or like the Wii for the grocery. And uh, yeah, I kind of, uh, unlike most, I, I, I believe I'm not, I'm not common, but I kind of think this lifestyle fits for me. I know <laughs> it doesn't fit for everyone and for probably for most people, but for me, I'm, I probably feel uh, quite used to it already. And so, yeah, it's, it, for, I, I think I'm pretty okay with it. Uh, and uh, it, my lifestyle has kind of shifted towards this. And I suspect I, even if, even if I can't go back, it's probably will not become the original lifestyle that I used to, I used to live. So yeah, that's my uh, personal experience recently. Okay. Uh, do you want to get start, Bruce or Yimbo? Yeah. Uh, I can be the next. Uh, okay. I think the, uh, 
with the winter coming, I think uh, not only in the U.S. but also in Europe, I, I remember that so right now there are lots of kind of spike in the, the coronavirus surge, right? Um, so I think this probably, the pandemic probably won't end until next summer or even later. So I think we're probably in this mode for a while. Uh, but on the other hand, I look at the 2020. Uh, so uh, we'll show you the 2020 review in a couple of days. Um, we achieved quite a lot, right? So quite a few contracts and moving forward. And if you look at outside the world and uh, SpaceX has launched um, Crew Dragon uh, and also launched Cargo Dragon and also the uh, Starship uh, pretty successfully within 2020. And Taylor Swift released uh, two studio ad albums in one year. Right. Right? She never done that. So I think you can achieve a lot even in the pandemic. Pandemic is not excuse, right? So I think we did quite well in 2020, but not enough. I think 2021, we'll say, well, Pandemics is actually not only a problem, but also opportunity. Uh, there will be more people remote, more people need a connection. So let's use this opportunity to really make NTN shine. So I think that's my kind of New Year's resolution for 2021. Okay, it's my turn. Yes. <laughs> so I think uh, 2020 is a tough year for everyone, just mm -hmm. like uh, first day. But uh, I'm still very glad because uh, by end of this year, especially in this in this month, we have um, the most uh, two important product be be deliver and announcement. One is from the community, is the third, and the uh, other is the uh, uncollect. And th there's still lots of opt optimization zoom to make make them better. But I think that's a very good 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 point that we already make them works. So I think uh, in the next year, we have a uh, lot of things to do and uh, I'm more full confidence about them. They will be adopted by lots of people and lots of company in, in, in the next year. And just like the, the code, uh, code words there, we also have hope to, to, to beat it and, uh, and the recover from this, this, this virus. So uh, hope in the next year, both of uh, the team and also the community member can get a better future and also take care, take care of yourself. Yeah. Okay. yeah, I also want to add some like uh, comments here so, uh, as well. So in 2020, we kind of learned one thing that is now internet is, well, internet is so important that with the internet, a lot of activities that we had to do be, uh, like um, uh, in person, previously now can be done remotely. And uh, I would say that internet is probably one of the most, uh, well, at least for people like me, the, the, the most important part uh, in our life. That means NKN is, is become, it has a higher um, or like a, has, a, has more opportunity because that's essentially what we're doing. And they're trying to contact, uh, like connecting people, connecting devices. And especially when people, we're happy to say that when people stay at home, they're all behind the firewall, all behind the routers. And <laughs> that's kind of our opportunity. That's at least a good thing for us. And uh, I hope that we can take advantage of that opportunity and uh, make it shine in 2020 and beyond. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, and also one more thing I want to mention okay. is that just just today I I just looked through some some my, my notes in the PC. I just uh, found an article that I wrote uh, three years ago. That's before the Uncan be founder. I just wrote some ideas in there that how the company was running and um, and what's the goal we want to implementation. Just some some wild idea in my in my brain. I just write something in there, and uh, today I just looked through them. I found that almost one hundred percent of them already implementation. But at that time, when I write some idea in there. It's just an idea. I think maybe it could become true. Maybe it will be failing. But today, when I look back at them, I'd probably say that all of them be implementation. Just one of them. Because when I write all, all of the same, uh, I forgot to write the or write the, the price. So the price <laughs> is no good. But, okay. but I think 
in future, that's also uh, very important. I just write the price today. I think maybe in the two, three years, when I look back, I, we can say that we also implementation all of the, all of the things we have been right down here. Yes, that's very cheering. <laughs> yeah, so what, what about you? How's your like practice? Uh, yeah, I think um, I wouldn't say uh, just, I think I totally agree with uh, Bruce. It's actually a, a opportunity. I joined this team in 2020 and I think it's, I would say it's during the epidemic and I got myself a really uh, great job. So I think it's a super good 2020 for me and I think it will be a better 2021 and I hope that's going to be for everybody and from my side I'll just say Merry Christmas <laughs> since it's coming yeah <laughs> so yes <laughs> and have a holiday whatever you are celebrating it could be Hanukkah could be Christmas could be New Year but whatever you oh celebrate. yeah right <laughs> yeah have holidays and uh, all the best and uh, and uh, we'll see you next time Yes, we'll see you all next time. Happy holidays, everyone. Okay. Okay. Bye. See you next year. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.